the start of the video, I gotta apologize that you guys can't see me except in the form of this cursor. While I was trying to film it, well, I thought I filmed it, but my computer monitor has been having a ton of problems, and I used the webcam for once, and the for some reason, the video just didn't come through at all. It was just completely black the whole time. And so if I did put it in there, I'd just be like a little black box talking, so I figured I would just cut, you know, cut what I could out of that and piece it together and make this video. So in the past, I've done these videos where I rank like my top three or top five books of the year. They never seem to do very well. <laughs> so I figured I'd do it in a little bit different way, in a more fun way, hopefully, and give some people some longer form content and talk about all the books I read for the year and rank them in the classic tier list style. And so we're just going to jump straight into it, starting with A River Lost. And so this book was a book that I had to read for class. Um, I read it senior year in undergrad. It was a good book for sure. It's not a book that I would usually read. And it talked about the Columbia River and the Columbia River Basin. It talked about the religious beliefs of some of the natives in the area and how it connected them to the river. It talked about how the power, the power that's generated from the river and the money that is generated from that power almost exclusively goes to either the government a chunk goes to the government, but a huge portion goes to these private parties, which I thought was very fascinating because they essentially own the river and get to own the water and destroy the environment of the water and everything for their own benefit. And although like this isn't a book that I would usually go out and read, I'm just going to put it in the C, in the C tier, but it's not a bad book. If that's something that you're interested in, I would highly recommend. And being somebody that's from the Pacific Northwest, I found it as, you know, being a very good read and very important read as somebody that lived in that area. We're gonna move on to number two here, which is Bitch by Lucy Cook. She is brilliant and she is so funny. I listen to it as an audiobook. She has a British accent. She has tons of different jokes riddled throughout the entire book that are great. And the basic gist of the entire book is that the female of various species oftentimes has a massive impact on evolution. And it's something that I think I didn't really get enough of, even as an undergraduate biology student. Uh, something that she really hammered home was that it's oftentimes the female that's getting to select the male. And so she really is the selector of the next generation. So I thought it was just a fascinating perspective. And this was, again, super funny, super light, super just a great book to listen to. I think being that it was an audiobook made it even better a better experience so i'm going to put this in the a tier for 2022 so the next book is breath by james nestor immediately a tier i read this at the end of summer incredible book i think it's one of those types of books that you get to follow the author in their journey and james nestor is a great author and he's really trying out these techniques to improve his breath and the physiological changes are just incredible. There's changes in his jaw structure, there's changes in his heart rate, his blood pressure, and his cardiovascular fitness, all this stuff. And it just goes to show you like the importance of your breath, even though it's something we don't really think about. So that's a great book. Again, not really my style of book. I'm usually reading like psychology or religion, but still an incredible read. Next book is Did America Have a Christian Founding? Uh, this was a decent book. I read it at the same time as I read um, the founding myth, which basically takes the opposite perspective, and I found that the founding myth was more um, more convincing. It did give me a different perspective on some of the founding fathers and how important Christianity was to them specifically, but as far as applying that to the country as a whole, I really didn't, I wasn't convinced by his arguments, so it's going to go in the D tier. Over the summer and kind of in the spring, I got really into mushrooms, not just like psychedelic types and learning about those, but also I got into just mushrooms in general, edible ones. Um, especially being like growing up in Idaho, Washington area, it's an incredible area to find mushrooms out in the wild. And so it's something that I always found like a little bit interesting, but I decided to give it a try, give this book a try. It's called Entangled Life. It's by, what does it say on there? Merlin Sheldrake, great author, um, great researcher and scientist. The book was fun. It was a fun read. Again, not really like a, the style of book that I usually would read. And so I'm going to I'm going to have to put it in the C tier. It wasn't a bad book at all. I just thought that it dragged out a little bit too long. The cover though makes up for it a lot. I love the cover and it's good just to like see it on the bookshelf, but 
yeah, if you're interested in mushrooms and mushrooms from all different perspectives, therapeutic perspective from just like the economy of mushrooms, I thought was kind of fascinating, all that stuff. If you're interested in that, I would highly recommend that book. Next, we have The Epic of Gilgamesh. This is a book that I had to read entirely for class. I've actually read The Epic of Gilgamesh before, not this specific translation, which I highly recommend if you're going to read the book which all these books, I will have links, the Amazon links down in the description below if you're interested in any of them. And I will rank them down there as well in the tiers. But the Epic of Gilgamesh I read for one of my, one of my graduate courses at Columbia. Incredible, incredible. I think it helps so much out a professor that was just an expert in not just the Epic of Gilgamesh, but in mythology in general. And so that book... It's, you know, the books that get in the S tier, like the books I will read again in the, in the near future in the Epic of Gilgamesh absolutely belongs in there. Um, this translation too, easy read, quick, took me just a couple days. Amazing. I, I would say, you know, I will eventually post some videos about reading the Epic of Gilgamesh and about how to, you know, either way, everybody I think should read that book. First book ever written, first epic ever written. And it's still, some of the themes in there still ring true to today. But I don't want to spoil it too much because I will talk about it in the future. Had to change your mind by Michael Pollan. So I am in a neuroscience course here at Columbia. And every this is like required reading, basically. Everybody's read it. And it's like the book that everybody's read if you're thinking about psychedelics and, and LSD and stuff like that. I'm going to put it in the B tier for a few reasons. One, well, first it had some incredible research packed in there some incredible you know conclusions you could say wrapped in there some really good gold nuggets that i still hold on to to this day i think michael pollan's explanation of the default mode network and how lsd and other hallucinogens turn that down fantastic and then essentially enables you to get more into the unconscious mind great but the only issue i see with the book is that first it's huge and so much of it is about Michael Pollan's own experiences. And now I've watched the Joe Rogan episodes with Michael Pollan. He's a great guy, but I didn't really read the book for that. I think if you're a fan of other Michael Pollan books and you like kind of being brought along with inside the journey of the author, then I would think that you would enjoy this book. But if you're looking for a book that talks like specifically about different hallucinogens and how they impact your brain, I don't think this is the best book out there. So another book I read when I got into swing trading was How to Swing Trade. This book, not a book that I would ever like read again. I took notes on it. It was an easy read. I mean, my guess is people who watch my channel are not interested in that. So I'm just going to put it in the C tier. It was a good book. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about it. Is God a Moral Monster? This is, okay. So the F tier <laughs> re represents books that I will never read again and that I, in some sense, regret reading or that I don't think should even be published work. More, the Is God a Moral Monster goes straight in the F tier. One of the most horrendous books I've ever read, and the author, I will never look at the author again after reading this book. I'll never look at him the same again. I think that one day, if he publishes other books, he I think he does have other books, I might go and read them, but they're terrible. It was so bad, I've never seen such a conceited person write a book and just directly lie to his audience. And I've never seen a book be so accepted by so many people. It was horrendous to just imagine an author going out there and trying to justify the immorality that's in the Bible. Recently posted a video about how slavery is supported in the Bible. It is. There's no way around it. I'm sorry. And for somebody to jump through every hoop imaginable to try and justify these certain passages that exist in there was just breathtaking to me. And then just right off the bat, he I'll never forget, he calls atheists arrogant, angry, and basically stupid or something. And it was just a complete lie, even based on the statistics that exist on that. And so I have a video on my channel already about this book and about how terrible it is. So if you want more information about it, check that out. But I, I could go on about that book forever, but let's move on to the next one, How to Lose a Dream. Um, this book was good. There's a few issues I saw with this book. First, I read a book previously called Are You Dreaming? That was just such an in-depth guide on how to lucid dream. So coming to read this book, I did come in with the perspective of having it be more of like a refresher, but even then it was too short. You know, the chapters, the pages are small, the chapters are small, it's too short of a read. And I feel like it didn't reinforce anything that I've learned or didn't add to anything that I learned in the past about lucid dreaming. If you've never heard about lucid dreaming or don't know about it at all, then I would recommend this book. 
but even then I would still rather see you dive like head first into it and read um, Are You Dreaming? I'm not sure what the author is. I'll link that down below as well. That is a much better book. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put in the D tier just because I felt like it was a little bit of a waste of time. Memories, Dreams, Reflections. This is another book that I had to read for class, the same class that I had to read the Epic of Gilgamesh for. I had to only read like a few chapters, but I decided to go through the entire thing. Incredible book. I think it's the best place to start if you want to learn about Carl Jung. There's only one issue that I see. And so that's why it doesn't get to go in the S tier. It'll go in the A tier. The issue that I see with this book is that it's like a mixture of autobiography. It's a mixture of history. It's a mixture of like science, but also myth. And so when reading it, it's difficult to determine what parts of this autobiography are real or not. Because it seems like some of the stories and in, in narratives and dreams that Carl Jung is referring to, you know, even my professor will say, don't be fooled by Carl Jung himself. Like he's talking about something different. There's more to his words than his then is like plainly visible. And so I don't really like that about a book. And I think it will be probably a book I will read again, or at least brush up on again. And so I hope that in the future I can go back and get a little bit more out of it than I did this first reading. But to give you more background on the book, it starts at Carl Jung's like very young age and some formative experiences and dreams he had when he was little, and then goes through all the way up to his experiences in therapy, like being a therapist. And then his break with Freud, his experiences just like exploring his active imagination i definitely would recommend the book but just be wary that some of the things you're like not going to understand everything because there's layers to it it's it's an interesting read I'll, I'll just leave it at that so next is sam harris's book the moral landscape and i was like i was really hyped to read the moral landscape it was one of the first books it might have been the first book that i read in this year and honestly it just fell completely flat i was not impressed with his argument at all i feel like he presupposed so many things the whole idea of this like objective morality that he essentially grounds in nothing i guess he wouldn't argue that it's really objective but that there are certain things like the well-being of all humanity that we can just take as true i mean i feel like it runs in the same problem as the christian argument is that what are you grounding it in you know what are you grounding this in and so i'm gonna put this in d tier was not impressed probably won't read again okay, and then we have other lands this is another book that i've listened to over the summer and it was a lot of fun i regret listening to it because there's so much of a visual component to it to the book i'm talking about different organisms different species different landscapes that were really impossible to really Im imagine and so i found myself oftentimes like in the car because that's where i would mainly listen to it trying to like find images of different things that he talked about but you know i missed out on a lot i feel like by listening to the book it, but it was very interesting but in c tier the spell of the sensuous this is another book that i had to read for class it was good it was decent and talked about primitive cultures hunter gatherers um, it talked about like the relationship between humanity and nature talks about shamans stuff like that it's a it's the only way i can describe it in a way a lot of my classmates described it is like unnecessarily dense and esoteric and just like way way too wordy that's how exactly how i felt about it it's like this is way too wordy that it's almost impossible to read so i'm gonna put that in d tier next we have stolen focus this is going in a tier it's going in a tier this was an incredible book i'm gonna put it right next to breath because i feel like i read these books at the same time basically one after the other and stolen focus was, inc was incredible it covers every single base that you could possibly think of as far as focus you know how to sleep better how to you know quit multitasking so you can focus better on different things how to cultivate your focus and how to build that into a routine good practices as far as just lifestyle in order to improve focus it's something that he emphasized constantly is that our focus is like a currency and that everybody wants your focus and so although we can do the absolute best that we can to improve our focus as an individual what we really have to combat is the overall system and infrastructure that's basically set on stealing your focus. We have to fix that. You know, crack down on social media as being able to employ whatever tactics possible in order to keep you on your phone just a little bit longer. And so again, that was a great book. Um, Johan Har Hari is similar to James, Nest James Nestor, goodness, in the, in the fact that they're like going head first and experiencing and trying out the exact same things that they're studying. So both those books are really fun reads. The Founding Myth. So if I don't put this in the S or A tier, <laughs> my brother will kill me for it. So no, but it deserves to be in one of these tiers. I'm putting it in the A tier. It was a great book. 
and it was really like the polar opposite of did America have a Christian founding. I think that what was unique about it and the part that I enjoyed the most of this book is that it focused on America right now and it focused on the principles that America reflects rather than focusing necessarily on the founding fathers. And so when looking at the Bible, we can objectively conclude that it's not aligned with the founding documents of the country. Right? We're allowed to believe whatever we want. The Ten Commandments say that you can't. And even things like we're allowed to kill in self-defense. There's legal forms of killing. What about in war? We're allowed to kill in war, right? That directly opposes the Ten Commandments. And it's just crazy to see like the Ten Commandments posted everywhere on these various like buildings, these various federal buildings. Federal government doesn't actually reflect those values. And he goes through every single one of the Ten Commandments and basically debunks their influence on the constitution and the country as a whole and so highly recommend that book if that's something that you're that you're interested in and also it has one of the best ratings on goodreads and so i think again that like proves for sure that it is a legitimately like solid book to read the gnostic gospels by elaine pales so she was actually a professor at columbia at barnard and she did ex a very impressive work on the gnostic gospels and like brought that back into light I think her book is fantastic and it shows really just a lost kind of vein of Christianity, something that a lot of people don't think about. And I think that more people should consider it. I have a video coming out, or I have a script written for a video that will be coming out uh, probably in 2023 about this book. Um, and so I'm not quite done with it. I have just like a last chapter left. So far, great. The only issue I have is that it's not long enough. I feel like it's way too quick of a read and she could have made like a 400 page book out of it instead of i think this one doesn't even break 200 and so it goes in the b tier um solid solid book so we're going to jump around a little bit we're going to go to the mind turn the mind into an ally this book is about meditation i feel like once a year i end up bring or end up reading a book about meditation this one's such a quick read it was decent it was decent. Not a huge fan. I'm going to put it in D tier. It's just regurgitation of the same stuff that I've heard over and over again about how important meditation is, but not really providing me with any methods for improving my practice, if that makes sense. The language instinct. Sorry, also going in the D tier. I, listen, okay, there, I know people, there are people close to me that are very interested in language, learning language, how language develop, all that stuff. And that is interesting to me. But to an extent, this book was just too in depth for me. Somebody who's not well versed in just the science of language. Yeah, it was way too dense for me to get um, a ton of benefit from it. I don't think I completely finished the book. I got probably like three quarters of the way through before just giving up. I was like, this is too much. So I'm putting in the D tier for me, not my thing, but Steven Pinker is an incredible author. I know a lot of people love his stuff. So don't shy away from it just because I didn't like it. The Tragedy of American Compassion. This again is kind of a book that I wouldn't usually pick up. I don't have much to say about it. It was a decent book. I think it did well in talking about the history of like the systems of charity and stuff. Uh, I talked a lot about New York, which now that I'm living here, it was kind of cool to learn about the history of that. Not something I'd highlight for the year. Okay, here we're getting into some pretty good books. So The Immortality Key. I'm going to put it in beats here. So these three books right here, Stolen Focus, Breath, The Immortality Key, are similar in the fact that you're following the author along this journey and they're researching things, they're learning new things. And the issue, the difference between these two and the immortality key is I didn't associate myself very much with Brian. As, not as much as I did with Johan and James Nestor. These guys were so fun to just like be alongside in this journey. And obviously their journeys are, are very different. But for Brian's book, it was just, I feel like I was being dragged along through all this archeology, span through all this like storytelling of his own personal story, and it wasn't something I was interested in. But the conclusions of the book are incredible. For those, of the, for those who don't know about the book, it's about how you know, it's possible that the Christian tradition came out of like basically a psychedelic tradition that was much older relating to the god Dionysus, stuff like that. It was a great, a great read, but I feel like there's too much filler in there. I do remember the beginning being especially interesting, and I read like the first 200 pages in like two days. And then it took me a long time to get through the rest of it. So the time falling bodies take to light. This is a very, I would say, ambitious book. So dense, so dense. Another book I had to read for class. Putting this in the B tier. It was a good read. It talks about mythology, psychology, sexuality, and the development of those things throughout the past, like, I want to say 50,000 years maybe. 
There's graphics in there. It was a good read. It talks about how consciousness has developed over time. It brings in things like the Epic of Gilgamesh, like Cathal Hayuk, which is something I will be talking about in future videos. So I won't get too much into the book because it does relate to some big videos that I have planned, especially for 2023. It's a good read. If you're interested and have background in psychology, mythology, and stuff like that, definitely um, consider it. It, also, it talks about like the emergence of the first universal gods, stuff like that. It talks about the origin of the feminine and the masculine and the f ebbs and flows of those two throughout history. So solid read. The Oracle of Night. This is a book that I'm actually currently reading. I'm not quite done with it. So far, it is probably going to be in the A tier, but it could be in the B tier because I feel like a big shift has happened. So far, it's talked about the history of... Um, I'm going to put it in the B tier for right now because I'm technically I'm not done with it. <laughs> it's talked about in the beginning it talks a lot about Sigmund Freud it talks about the science of dreams the history of dreams which was exactly what I got the book for fascinating the researchers specifically are actually vindicating some of Freud's theories which I find very fascinating very fun to read and they're vindicating his theories through neuroscience and so things like repression they're actually finding neurological patterns neurological systems that do that exact function that are associated with that function which i find again so fascinating but it has taken a significant shift from more like psychology to more like chemistry and biology which isn't exactly what i got the book for and i'm about halfway done and so hopefully the remainder of the book will be good if it is maybe it'll be in an a tier book but for now, I'm going to put it in B tier. So I'm also going to say that The Moral Animal is going to go in B tier. This was a solid read. It taught me a ton of a ton about humanity, a ton about um, sexuality. I really like the book. Robert Wright is a solid author. I think the book could have been a lot shorter, if I'm being honest. It taught me a lot about both female and male ancestors of humans and how we evolved and how that forms our relationships or impacts our relationships today it talks about what it means to be a moral animal and especially at the end i thought it was a pretty good take one thing that was kind of weird about the book that i would warn that i i would have liked to have known before getting into it is that it follows charles darwin as like a represent a representation of the entire story like follows alongside charles darwin and his stories and his experiences and then relates those to the overall experiences of human evolution and moral evolution so I don't know I thought that part was kind of weird I oftentimes found myself like dreading the chapters that were about Darwin himself because I didn't really care about Darwin's own personal stories last is the illusion of God's presence going in the S tier so there's somebody that in the comment section of one of my videos recommended this book and I love that a book recommendation for my comments was one of the best books I've ever read. It was incredible. It was incredible. Laid the foundation for some of my theories, like as a whole about humanity, that I will um, be sharing with you guys soon. And so I cannot give enough praise. I forget the person who recommended it to me, but I definitely put the comment um, up on the up on the screen somewhere. And just a huge thank thanks to them. Yeah, incredible book. The illusion of God's the illusion of God's presence is about how humans evolved to become more infantile, and because we're more infantile, our psychology is also more infantile, and that ultimately lays the foundation of God as being a innate image of the mother. And so, when we're born as little babies, we have an inherent image of our mother at birth that includes somebody who's always there, somebody who's endlessly knowledgeable, somebody who has good positive intentions and stuff like that. And so that image eventually gets transposed from our mother to ultimately a God because it has to be, has to be put somewhere. And so what we experience as God in these times of like complete terror or complete depression and sadness when we feel that somebody's there for us, it's actually an innate capacity that we have to feel the presence of our mother. And so God is, the feeling of God's presence is actually the feeling of our mother's presence. Yeah, incredible book. I think it relates a lot to um, Sigmund Freud's theories. And that's something that I've tied into it, which I will be getting into in a later, in a later video. So if you made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you for sticking around. I feel like the people who watch my book videos are the OGs. They're the real ones that 
that want to learn the most all right so props to you for making it through this video and if you did make sure to like subscribe and most importantly let me know what your top books of the year were i want to go through your guys recommendations and read them and talk about them in future videos and maybe even have people on for discussions because that one book recommendation that i did get incredible and so yes please leave your book recommendations down below and give me you know make a little tier list it doesn't have to be all of your books but some of the top books of, you, of 2022 for you and maybe some of the worst ones as well so i know what to avoid thank you guys again for watching and i will catch you on the next video see ya